Hello and welcome. I'm Tom Copeland. I'm a trainer, author, and advocate for the business of family child care. With this video, I want to take a look at the top three record keeping tips for 2017 so you can get started on the right foot. Do you love record keeping? Probably not. But these three record keeping tips, tips that I'm going to discuss will make the biggest difference in reducing your 2017 taxes. There's a lot to record keeping, but focusing on these three things are the most important things you can do. So start with these and you'll be well ahead and uh, paying as least tax as possible on your 2017 tax return. Here they are. First, save receipts for all expenses associated with your house. Secondly, keep a daily record of all the meals and snacks that you're serving. And lastly, track all the hours you work in your home. First, saving house receipts. You're entitled to claim all ordinary and necessary expenses for your business. Ordinary and necessary means typical, helpful, appropriate, useful. Your job is providing a home learning environment for children. Parents expect you to maintain your home as a home. Therefore, anything to clean, repair, maintain your home as a home is probably ordinary and necessary. But well, what does that include? It includes hundreds and hundreds of items. Your typical large house expenses such as property tax, mortgage interest, utilities, gas, oil, electric, water, garbage, cable, television, house insurance, house repairs, rent if you're renting your home, furniture, appliances, equipment, lawnmower, rake, garden hose, light bulbs, toilet paper, detergent soap, tools, garbage bags, virtually everything in your home. You don't have to have bought the item thinking about your business in order to deduct it. You just have to be using it in your business. And since you're using virtually everything in your home to maintain your home as a home, it's going to be ordinary and necessary. Outside appearance of your home, do parents look at your house before they're going to uh, decide to enroll? Do children play outside? Yes. So maintaining the outside appearance of your home painting your house, paying somebody to wash your windows, a lawnmower, a snowblower, a welcome mat, the doorbell. Parents come into your living room. Children are in your living room. You're providing a living room environment. Pictures on the wall, lamps, rugs, end tables, curtains, shades, blinds, virtually everything. You want to save receipts, therefore, for everything associated with the house. Even if you might not think at the time you bought it, that it's a deductible, save the receipt anyway. At the end of the year, you can sort out whether or not something's deductible. Many providers pay too much in tax because at the end of the year, they don't have all their receipts. And when I help people being audited, I'll say, do you have all the receipts? Did you, did you save everything? Does this reflect what you spent? No, because people didn't save everything. Step two. Keep daily records of all the meals and snacks you're serving. You want a daily record showing each child how many different meals and snacks. Now, you can count all the ones that you're reimbursed by the food program. You want to be on the food program. It's a nutritional program that pays you each month for serving nutritious food. So you can deduct all the meals and snacks even if you're on the food program and get reimbursed for those meals and snacks. In addition, you want to count all the unreimbursed meals and snacks that you're serving. And these unreimbursed meals and snacks don't have to be nutritious. So, you're serving Twinkies in the afternoon, a Popsicle, Doritos. I'm not telling you to serve this as junk food, but if you serve it, no matter what you're serving, even if it's not nutritious, it's deductible. You can count it. It counts as a snack in the same way that a snack for the food program counts. So you want a daily record, particularly of these non-reimbursed meals and snacks. How do we track all this? For the meals and snacks you're getting reimbursed for, you'll have a record if you save the monthly claim form that you're submitting that shows children's attendance and who was eating how many different meals and snacks. So save that record. You can deduct those meals and snacks. In addition, you want to track the unreimbursed meals and snacks. You can do that using the Kid Care software program formerly called Minute Menu. You can use the Red Leaf Calendar Keeper. If you go online, and here's a link to it, 
uh, you can download a chart that you can use to track these extra meals and snacks. And there's no fee for just downloading that chart. It's part of the calendar. But this is such an important thing to do. We've made it available for everyone. Why is this so important? One snack a day for one child for a year is equal to $190 deduction per child. This is a lot of money. And many providers fail to track this. One provider says, at the end of the day, I pass out crackers to the children. That's a snack. That's a snack. Lastly, track all the hours that you're working. There's two kinds of hours to think about. There are the hours children are present in your home, and there are the hours children are not present in your home, but you're still using your home for business purposes. We want to keep records of both. Hours children are present. You want to track all the hours from the moment the first child arrives until the last child leaves. If you're caring for children for 11 hours a day, and that's the average nationwide, that's 33% of the year right there. You want to pay attention to pickup times. Even though parents may be uh, supposed to pick up their kids at 5 o'clock or 6 o'clock, the question is, when did the last parent leave? It doesn't matter if you weren't being paid after 5 o'clock. It doesn't matter if this is a subsidized child. If somebody's on your property, you're using your home for your business and you want to track that time. So if the last if the pickup time is six and the last parent is there at six, but's talking to you and hasn't left until 6.05, 6.10, 6.15, if they're still there talking to you and then finally leave, you want to know when they finally left and record that time. Why? 30 minutes a day. If parents are really leaving the last one at 6.30 rather than 6, and that's true every day, that's equal to 1.5% of the year. You're going to get a 1.5% higher deduction for all your house-related expenses, which represent thousands and thousands of dollars. So this is a big deal. What are you doing when kids are not there? Because we want to track those hours as well. Well, you're cleaning meal preparation, meal planning, activity preparation, record keeping, time spent on the food program paperwork, time on the internet, the time it's taking you to listen to me right now, if kids are not present in your home, this time counts. Parent interviews, parent phone calls, anything that you wouldn't be doing if you weren't in business, count that time. How do we track these hours when kids are not there? The best advice I would have is each year, starting in 2017 now, take two months and carefully track all these hours. You want to note on a calendar, on the software somewhere, the time of day, 6 a.m. to 6.30 before the kids arrive, you're cleaning. 6.30 to 7 after the kids have gone, you're cleaning. Friday, Saturday night, you're doing uh, record keeping, activity preparation, whatever. The time of day, so we can see that it's not when kids are there and what you're doing then use the average for those two months for the rest of the year. So if the first month you work 40 hours a month on all these things, and the second month you work 44 hours, the average of those two is 42 hours. So you would take 42 hours times 12 months and, and keep a record of those hours. This is the single most important thing you can do to reduce your taxes, is keep track of these hours. Again and again, when I'm helping people being audited, I'm asking them, is the hours that you claimed on your tax return an accurate reflection of all the time you spent in your home, particularly when kids are not there? And the answer is usually no. They didn't keep records of everything. And this is a big, big deal. That's it. These are the top three things. Save receipts for all your house expenses. Keep records of all the meals and snacks you're serving, particularly those not reimbursed for and track all the hours you're working in your home, in particular when kids are not present. For more information, my Family Child Care Record Keeping Guide goes into this in great detail. It identifies over a thousand deductions that you could claim on your tax return, and it's most popular of my books. I also have the Child Care Business Partnership, where I work together with Minute Menu, now called Kid Care Software Program, to help people take better advantage of the accounting section. I can review your tax return. I can help you if you're audited. I can review your reports to make sure you're on the right track. So I can provide a lot of extra help in getting your records organized 
and helping you save the most time and money on your taxes. For more information about the partnership, go to my website. I also do monthly webinars on all types of business topics. You can find more information about that on my website as well. So, if you have questions about this, feel free to contact me. I don't charge anything for answering questions. Here's my phone number. Here's my email address, my website, and I'm also on Facebook. If you have questions, I'm happy to answer them there as well. Good luck. Record keeping is not fun, but it will be a significant reward for you. You will probably be earning more per hour for the time you're spending on record keeping than you're earning per hour caring for kids. Good luck.